Welcome back to the Buds in the Box podcast. The Leafs win 6-2 to two against the LA Kings in the Staples Center. Justin Bieber was in the house. A huge game from Jack Campbell and Choo Choo Wayne Train with an unbelievable toe drag to Pierre Engvall. That was the highlight of my night. What did you guys think about the game? I agree. Thank you for agreeing. <laughs> Is that game. all you have no, to say? It was a good game. It was, uh, <laughs> I thought the Wayne Train's toe drag was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, I kind of just thought it was gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> and, no, nah, but I thought they played right off the hop. They were just better. I was slightly worried at the beginning of the second period. And then they scored, like, nine goals back to back to back to back. So mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I'm fine now. But there was, like, a slight moment where I had a little, little bit of a – a little bit of a panic attack, but not a panic attack, but like, you know, I'm panicking a little bit. And then, and then, uh, who was it? Who was it? Who scored that? Pierre Engvall, first goal since like first game of the season or something. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, yeah, but I thought it was just an all around good game. Campbell's just like, I don't even know, man. Like, I've never, obviously, I've never seen a Leaf goalie like do this well because I've been a Leaf fan for like, you know, since I could walk and like, I've never just, I've just, you know, I've never seen a goalie be this good for the Leafs. And like, it's kind of awesome to see like a Leaf goalie being a Vesna contender. It's just something that we've never witnessed before, you know? So I honestly, I honestly think that having Campbell with, with starting experience, play, like he's going to, by the end of the season, he'll probably have started like 60 games. Okay with that experience like yeah last season he he played a lot of games but it was what was it 20 games maybe around right? so like this season he's gonna have 60 games under his belt he, he, if he keeps it up this is like the one this is gonna be i think what gets the Leafs over like that first round hump having a guy like jack campbell it's just a difference maker those all those years we lost to boston two garage stand on his head right where anderson just didn't do it You know, it was just like, and then last year, Campbell still stood on his head. It was just like, he's just going to have this like more experience, more confidence. And then it's just going to be that this is the year guys. I'm saying (laughs) every year it's said, but like, come on, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I I mean, yeah, with your, with with your theory there, I mean, Price just overshadowed him, but he is Carey Price, right? He's a generational talent, so that's gonna you're gonna you're gonna hit that wall. But like with Rask, like you said, Rask just outplayed Anderson every single year, so <laughs> that just kind of <laughs> sucked. But um, yeah, um, I, I mean, I think it's a pretty good game. Um, there's there's not a lot of flaws after, um, uh, like. <laughs> Like 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 Valley said, like after that little <laughs> a little hump, um, like there was a little hump in the second. It was a little bit scary, but uh, I thought it was a great overall game from the boys, and definitely a great one from Campbell. Um, as always, <laughs> do you need a minute? <laughs> oh, you're like it's yeah. All right, Sorry, anyway. <laughs> There was something really funny got texted to us and we were laughing about it. That's what was happening yeah. there. Sorry for any confusion that went on. <laughs> but anyway, Eric, go ahead. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get into the game. Um, besides Jack Campbell's uh, performance, you know what else is amazing? Just like Jack Campbell's performance? Tavares. Our co- No, our, our sponsors. Oh. So make sure you guys go check out the links in the description at manscaped.com and thepeoplescup.ca. Um, we'll tell you more about it after the second period, uh, but Manscaped, Black Friday sale coming up. Make sure you guys go check it out. Use both code BUDS20 for both websites. And that's basically all I have to say. Um, we also have an unboxing coming soon because they sent us a lot of stuff. So we're looking forward to that. Some pretty cool stuff, yeah. And yeah, first period, not too much going on. Uh, the Leafs dominated most mostly i think what were the shots there it was 15 to 10 but like la got a bunch of shitty shots near the end uh leafs outplayed kerfoot got a goal it was a great pass by kasha kasha played unbelievable today it was so fun to watch him um and kerfoot got that goal assisted by wayne train once again uh did you guys have any thoughts on that on that goal or fantastic goal there's nothing else to say. 
<laughs> there's nothing else to say because that was just a great goal and i i said yeah, just, hands, like, just stop sorry jude you were saying uh yeah i mean just like simmons i said he he reminisced me david um and <laughs> yeah i have to agree with you jude um wayne simmons had himself a night so did sandine a lot of good players stop it <laughs> Anyway, moving on to the second period. Um, this is where the Leafs started to completely take over the game. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Sorry about, about the laughter. The boys are just having a good time. Um, moving on to the second period. This is where things start to get a little shaky. Uh, Victor Arvidsson scored a power play goal from Anzi Kopitar. And who else but Sean Dersey? This was a big story throughout the night. Yeah. As the Leafs traded Sean Dersey to the Kings. He played in the AHL, got called up, and then, what do you know, gets an assist and scores his first NHL goal against us. It's it's a common pattern between a lot of Leafs players that leave, just to name a few, Kadri, Anderson, um, Hyman. We're going to make another video on that for sure because I, I it's it's a really interesting topic to, to uh, awesome. talk about. But yeah. yeah, it's actually like, it's actually really like, it makes sense, but it's really kind of strange. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I mean, you can kind of like turn it back to like the media and stuff like that. And just like the, the pressure of playing in Toronto, but at the same time, it's like, what the heck? <laughs> like, how is this just happening? You know, I all mean, these, Kessel, like, right? that's literally his first yeah, too. game, NHL game. He's 30. not even a fantasy option. I, I tried to I tried to look at his stats. He's got a goal and an assist in his one game against like that's nuts. Yeah, they it, I mean it's a smart thing to do for them because like they're playing the Leafs, they need defensemen, and who else but Sean Dersey, and it worked. Um, I mean, we still he was like I think he was minus, so it didn't work that well. Hmm. Um yeah, he was minus two, so <laughs> didn't end up working out that well. But I mean he got his first NHL goal. Maybe yeah. the least just felt like they had to be nice to him. But do you know what that trade was? I do not, but I can look it up real quick. Because if it was part of the Campbell one, I don't really care. Yeah, I I wouldn't you care. Know? But like, if I it was maybe been. if it was like, because the thing was we got Kyle Clifford and and yeah. Campbell together, and that was like, <clears throat> like I'm completely good with with that, you know. Yeah, Clifford's back. Was it a part of that? Yeah, I know Clifford. Oh yeah, did they just recall them? I think we talked about that, though. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, it was for Muzzin. So, it's so whatever. I'd yeah. rather have Muzzin than Jersey. I'd rather have Muzzin, too, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, Jersey gets his assist. Later on, he gets his first goal. But then the Leafs really started to pile it on. This was the choo-choo goal. Wayne Simmons dangling, passing it back door to Engvall, and such a such a nice goal. I was uh, playing NHL with Jude at the time, and I was like, oh, my God, that was a gross goal. You know, one of those. Um, and then they just started piling them on. John Tavares, Austin Matthews, Jason Spezza. John Tavares' goal was a nice tip um, off William Nylander. Matthews' goal, Matthews and Tavares were on the ice for some reason together, and Tavares threw it in front. Matthews had a stick down on the ice. Um, and then Spezza with a nice power play goal on the second unit. Just an old cool. classic slapper. Pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah. That was like vintage Spezza. Yeah. Like okay. that's, you know, that was pretty cool. I, I like that. Uh, he's got that shot still. Like the shot's not, not deteriorating at all with age. He's mm-hmm. still got that powerful slap shot. You know, it's kind of cool. It's like, it's crazy. It's it's like, he's just, he's, he's what, he's almost 40. What is he like 37, 38? eight almost he is 38 that's crazy and he's just doing this in the nhl and he looks fast yeah he looks fine to me you know but anyways yeah uh, i i found it pretty funny throughout the entire game um it was the Sportsnet broadcast too they're kind of just like saying oh yeah the leafs can't score and they're 27th in, in goals per game they're 20 set they're 31st in shooting percentage with 7.5 percent and they go out and just slap the king 6-2 like it's nothing, just an average day. Um, and I honestly like the Leafs when they're not generating as much offense because that means you're generating 
defense and good defense. And it clearly shows, especially with Jack Campbell's stats. I mean, we literally just called up our AHL starter and got him a shutout like it was nothing. So yeah. I love this side of the Leafs. The defensive Leafs are good. I think that's the thing is like what we've seen is a really good regular season team, right? That's just super offensively talented and goes out there during the regular season, does all this offensive stuff and it's good and they win, right? But playoff hockey is almost like a literally, it's like playing in a whole different game. It's not even hockey anymore. You put the word playoff in front of it and it's a completely different game, right? So being a more defensive team in the playoffs is so much more helpful than being a super highly powerful offensive team just is because that's mm-hmm. the way playoff hockey work. Games are one, two, one, you know, they're not one, seven, five, right? Like that's just not how playoff hockey works. Playoff hockey's hard hitting. It's, it's battle. It's like 30 goals. And that's kind of like what the Leafs goals, like aside from Spezza's goal, you know, it was like pretty, gritty like get in there get into the crease kind of goals like Matthews was right in there Tavares had that nice tip right Bunting's goal um was it it was Bunting's goal right yeah it was filled in his goal he's right in there it was a little fluky but like that's the type of goal that gets scored in the playoffs you know so it's like and then Campbell's back there and he's facing not as many shots as he did last year and it's like it's just it's all I feel like and they're winning like that, that's just a whole, like they're 14, six and one or something crazy like that. Right. This is a really good record. So like putting into perspective, yeah, they're 27th in the league for goals four. Right. But they're second in the league. Yeah. Standings. So it's like added up. Right. <clears throat> Obviously there's something working. And even if they're not scoring as much, it's because they're playing really good defense. So Yeah, well, I actually saw something. And as you were talking about panel, Eric, um, the American stream was way better, by the way. like Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, Eric said that Lundquist was, like, playing guitar and Biznet was singing. And we're just – we're watching whatever we're watching. I don't even know. <laughs> but, um, Talk about nonsense. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and they actually mentioned um, that – it, I think it was an interview with Keith. They were talking about the penalty kill and Keith brought up past goalies uh, for what I think. I, I don't know if this is just Eddie Olchek speaking from his ass or something, but um, he said that he brought up past goalies and that those goalies wouldn't make those saves um, that you would need on a penalty kill, like like cross ice one-timers and stuff like that, that, they, that they're desperation. And they brought up Anderson and how he's positionally sound, but he doesn't make those types of saves, right? Like he's... I don't know. He, he he'll make the he'll make the first save, right? And that's kind of it. But with like like with Campbell, the reason the penalty kill they're saying is so good right now is and the defense is so good is because they have a goalie they can trust that will make saves and will will go beyond like for like to to stop the puck. So in that in that being said, that you feel more comfortable as a player if you can trust the guy behind you and so on and so on, right? So I think that he plays a huge role in that too, right? Yeah, we've actually I'm, talked about that before. Sorry. Just oh, like, I was, I, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. We uh, we've actually talked about that before. How Anderson's kind of robotic. Mm-hmm. You know, he's kind of like he's so good. He is a really like amazing goalie. Mm-hmm. You know, he's so like positionally sound. But when it comes to like doing something desperate, like you said, like desperation or like something that's out of the ordinary to make a save, he just won't do it. Like you've, you've never seen Anderson dive across the net, like in desperation to go save a puck. Right. Campbell does it like twice a game, you know? So it's just like, it's, you gotta have that. It's all like, yeah, you can be a skilled goalie and be uh, have heart or sorry, you can be a skilled goalie and have the fundamentals and everything. But if you don't have like heart, then it doesn't really matter. Right. Um, Because you're not going to make those desperation saves. Like, because they do happen. I'm not saying Anderson never made one of those, but like he did. He had a crazy one, I think, where he put his stick out. And he, <laughs> I can't remember that. But other than that, He's I Boston. mean, yeah, I guess I think it was on Pasternak. Oh, that was yeah, awesome. It was. But like you know, he just didn't do it often enough. And then Campbell's just always like he's always on it. Feels like he's always on the ball. Like he's ready for anything that's coming. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. McDavid could come down flip the puck up on a stick and start like using it like a little cross stick and Campbell would be like, oh, okay, what do I like? I'm ready. Like, you know, 
He'd be like, well, that's pretty nifty. And then he'd like, he'll say that, <laughs> you know, we're pretty good there, kid. You, you better. Good. That's kind of nifty. <laughs> yeah. I do have to agree with both of you there. The one thing I want to take from that is, um, Oh no, no, I forgot. Um, it's okay. We can move on. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll move on. Wait, wait, dude. Just what did you mention before? Uh, the penalty kill. Oh, sorry. I remember now. So, um, a lot of the thing was like Frederick Anderson was a, a pretty liked guy in the dressing room. I mean, he used to play Fortnite with Austin Matthews all the time. And, but there's, he, there's just he was something fundamentally sound on yeah. Fortnite. He'd, he'd crank 90s, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. he didn't say much. Yeah. But like, there's just, there's just something about Campbell that like, you don't even want to win for yourself. You don't, you don't, you don't want to win because like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to win this game so that the coach doesn't yell at me. Right. You just want to win because you just want to make them feel good. And I was talking to Jude about this before people who don't like Campbell, there's, there's a special place in hell for you. (laughs) How (laughs) can you not like Campbell? That's so true. He's such a likable dude. Mm -hmm. He just like, he's just a good human being and you can tell and it has nothing to do honestly like that's a huge thing is like if you're a terrible human being not even terrible human being but like if you're just like not a great person then like you're just not going to be as good a hockey player like it reflects because it reflects on how your teammates like you and want to play with you and like how how you want to you know go about the way that you you do things right it's just like it completely like translates and you can tell that like he's just been positive for his entire career right he's a backup he was he was a first round pick but 12th overall or something crazy like that a goalie right who obviously there was huge potential for him like was just kind of tossed away right he stayed positive he's kept working he stays positive again he stays positive he goes to LA backup to quick you know, he, get, he gets 20 games in a season, right? And then he comes to Toronto, and now he's got this opportunity, and he's and he's ready for it because he's stayed positive for all this time, and, like, he's been ready, and he's had a good attitude about everything. If you just, like, if you're, like, getting moved, and, like, people are, you're just a backup goalie, and people are telling you you're not good enough to be the starter, and you just got to get down on yourself, then it's going to reflect on the way you play the game, right? It just, it just will, because then when that time comes, you're going to be like, ah, oh, like – uh, you know, I wasn't good enough. Like I'm going to try, but like, you know, so it's just like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. V- very ironic too, that Jack Campbell played, used to back up quick. Now he's, now he's playing against them and having almost a, like a whole, like, you know, like 1% or 10% better save percentage than him. And, you know, just killing him uh, goalie wise. So, you know, I have to agree with you there. Great come up um, from Jack Campbell. How can you not love the guy? And we might see him in a uh, Olympic jersey this year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we will see him in an Olympic jersey yeah. this year. He's the way Demko's playing, too. So he, Tonight, he had a 938 save percentage, and his stats are going to go down. That's how good he's playing right now. Hmm. He he will be. I mean, I, I want to do a video on the full Canada and USA mm-hmm. roster and whatever. Oh, we have to. We will we can but, do one for um, every team. Yeah, we can do one for every team. But um, <clears throat> Campbell, to me, he's the best goalie in in the NHL right now. He's like he is. He has the best save percentage. He has the best goals against average. And like we say, he's got the best like heart. Like he's there. You know, he's like he wants to play and he wants to be the best. And you can see it in this game. And like he he is a top Vesna contender right now. Yeah, and it, but it's it's gonna be tough though. As Canadian fans, it will. It will. If we want to see like Canada do well, and then watching them score on Campbell, it kind of sucks. But like, whatever. Mm. I'd rather see Canada. Uh, yeah, but I. I mean, their starter is going to be Hellebuck or Gibson, and then Campbell's going to be the third string. So you think? I I would think so. The depending on right now. It, that's true, but I mean, Gibson's still hot as shit, and he's, ah. yeah. I don't think, the, I think, no, no, he is. He is. I he's think the way to go. Gonna come out hot, it's and they're going to score a few goals. Listen, if they have Gibson. all three of them there, if they have Gibson, Hellebuck, and Campbell, you really can't go wrong playing any of them. Mm. And then you just play the hot hand for the medal game. Exactly. 
but we'll talk about that another yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, we'll get we'll get into it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we can project the China roster. We can project the, the U.S. roster. They're actually having a meeting uh, to see whether China can actually play in the Olympics for hockey. Well, they, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, they because they're, what do they're you worried mean, like in just, hockey. Yeah, like they're worried that China is just gonna like it's just gonna be like a just terrible hockey. Like, well, the thing is, you're gonna have McDavid and McKinnon. Yeah. And the best players in the entire world against you know are there any chinese nhlers right now i don't think so like a full yeah so like you know it it would probably be pretty i think it would be pretty uneven but i don't know who the best players are but almost demoralized like it would just be like as much it would be like oh yeah like you you can try and be underdogs but there's no, they're like you can be an well, underdog to, to a certain them. extent, you know. Yeah. USA yeah. is underdogs. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's it's like it, there's a certain extent. It's not. It would be literally probably like playing like it would be like an NHL team playing. It would be like an all star team. NHL all star team playing against a, a junior team, minor league team or a junior team. Yeah. So that it would be a, it would be an issue. But anyways, they, I mean they have done that before. They're like. Canada has played like against um, in the past years. Who like who's pretty bad? Latvia is pretty bad. Yeah, um, I mean, but I mean, Merz Lincoln's played crazy when we played them. That's so. true. That's true. Anyway, like like they have a big name, right? Like, that's true. We'll talk about the Olympics. Yeah, 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 we, we, yeah. Olympics. yeah we can talk for hours. That. Yeah. For that. Yeah. Anyway, Bunting scored, um, and then Dursey got his goal. Meant nothing. The game was over. Um, Leafs played very well. First star, Sandine with three assists. Second star, yeah. Matthews with a goal and an assist. And then third star, Sean Dersey, obviously. Was this his first NHL game? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Pretty good debut as a defenseman. In your well, first. I heard a stat during the game that he had seven points in his last two games in the AHL. Wow. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we gave up on him too early. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little worried, but not too worried. <laughs> Yeah, we have enough okay. offensive defense. Muzzin's put in some good work, so. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, if you guys don't have any last words, we'll wrap it up here. No? Yeah. Okay. Well, make sure you guys go check out our sponsors once again. Um, I'm just going to give a quick shout out to Manscaped um, because they are our sponsors. They sent us the performance package 4.0, which came with so many stuff. So you guys will see it in the unboxing that we will release soon. They gave us a lot more 4.0, um, a lot of goodies. Um, there was like deodorant in there. They gave us body wash, shampoo. Uh, yeah, I'm trying it smells to really good too. Disposable shaving really mats. Yeah. Um, a, a really, really cool um, toiletry bag. That yeah, is, I love the toiletry really bag. Nice. Yeah, you said you wanted that one, and it mm. is amazing. The quality. Yeah, is so good. I've been needing a toiletry bag, and then it showed up in my in my mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, they also sent us um, another pair of underwear. Guys, the Manscaped products are amazing. I can't rave about them enough. Really good quality. It's Black Friday coming up, and there's going to be a huge sale. So make sure you guys go to manscaped.com and use code BUDS20 for 20% off your purchase. And that's all I will say about it. I will shut up. Um, And yeah, so thank you guys for watching the Buds in the Box podcast. Once again, at least played amazing. And we will see you guys next time. Bye for now.